All right, good morning, everybody. My name is Allison Yarp. I am a sophomore in the college, and I am studying anthropology and human biology and biology. And today, I will be talking to you about Coffea arabica from the Rubiaceae family, or as we all like to know it, it as coffee. So. Okay, quick overview of Coffea arabica. It is originally from the Ethiopian mountains. Now it is mainly found in Central and South America. Uh, that is where it's primarily cultivated, and actually mainly in Brazil and Colombia now. As we all know, coffee is a big part of our society nowadays. 75% uh, of the worldwide coffee consumption actually comes from coffee arabica and is actually also the um, oldest known cultivated species in the coffee genus. And it's actually been uh, consumed for about over a thousand years. Uh, the main derivative that I'm going to be speaking about today is caffeine, and we all know it primarily for its stimulant effects. Okay, botanical description of coffee arabica. It's primarily cultivated in the tropical and subtropical regions of the world, which like I said before is going to be in South and Central America. It is a small evergreen tree. In the wild it'll grow up to approximately 30 feet. However, in cultivation it's kept at about 6 to 8 feet, uh, mainly to keep it easier for harvesting. They like to say that they'll cut it to the height of a man. The leaves on the tree are dark green, oval, and veined. They have a little scalloped edge. They kind of come to a point. We did see it at the botanical garden, so I don't know if you guys remember it, but uh, they kind of come to a point. They're a little elliptical, um, so that's one way to identify it. Uh, the bark on the tree is an ashy white, and it also has some white, very white, fragrant flowers, and those can grow to approximately like 20 uh, clusters, and um, they also will be right near the fruits, which also hold the beans. And these fruits, um, they will be green until they ripen, and then they'll turn to a yellow, to a dark red, as you can see in the picture. And um, these will actually hold the beans. There's a fleshy pulp surrounding the beans, and then uh, there's about two in each fruit. And actually, the fruits um, are sometimes called cherries by the farmers, um, because they do kind of resemble them, as you can see, with the deep red. Um, yeah, and actually, one tree can produce approximately 1 to 12 dried beans per year, 1 to 12 pounds of dried beans per year, I'm sorry. And uh, these are actually harvested by either being picked um, one by one off the plant or just shaken down onto mats. Okay, some traditional uses. I didn't actually put uh, specific examples because they are so wide ranging that it would have just been an extremely long list. They're used for everything from uh, inducing labor to treating influenza to treating a headache to treating drunkenness to even being used as an aphrodisiac I mean everything and then also all parts of the plant are used from the root to the fruit to the leaves to the stems so um, that is kind of a quick example um, the food it has been consumed for over 1,000 years and it is the most consumed functional food in the world which does um, make sense it is actually in the US, 68% of the population over the age of 10 consumes coffee. And that can equal to about 150 billion cups per year, if you can believe that. Um, and actually, the gourmet coffee that we all know and love is from the coffee arabica. And some uh, quick other uses are that the bark can, is actually turned into manure, uh, parchment, and then pulp, which is fed to cows sometimes in India. Okay. Chemistry and pharmacology of the plant. Uh, the main ones I'm going to mention are caffeine, which we know for its stimulant effects, and you can see it right there, uh, theobromine uh, and theophylline, which is a bronchodilator, and chlorogenic acid, which has some gastric effects. The concentrations of these are that caffeine is about 9,000 to 14,000 milligrams per kilogram. Uh, it's actually also a defense mechanism for the plant, meaning that it can uh, cause, um, it can be harmful to bacteria and to fungi that can cause harm to the plant. And it's also, um, if it's, the plant has been in one area for a long time, the caffeine can actually seep into the soil and inhibit weed growth around the plant. So that's something interesting for actually the plant itself. And then uh, theobromine is present in about 35 to 40 milligrams per kilogram, and theophylline is about 7 to 23 milligrams per kilogram. And then some other things that I didn't put up there are that the uh, chemicals that have the greatest impact on the flavor of the plant are furanones, acetaldehyde, propanol, and a few others. Okay, Biological activity of the plant. The caffeine mechanism of action is that it causes uh, central nervous system stimulation by binding to adenosine receptors in the body. Um, so we do all know it as a stimulate, stimulant. Uh, not only does it stimulate the, 
central nervous system. It also stimulates the skeletal muscles, the respiratory system, the cardiac system, uh, ar causes arterial dilation, and it also acts as a diuretic. Um, some of the ways it does this um, more specifically is that it can cause vasoconstriction, uh, especially in the brain, which means that it will, uh, the, since the blood vessels are going to constrict, it will decrease blood flow, which actually in some patients can uh, decrease head pain, which is why sometimes when people do have a headache, they can drink a cup of coffee and then um, the pain will go away. Uh, it does also have positive inotropic effects on the heart, which means that it can increase contractility, which can cause an increase in heart rate, um, which is uh, why also you notice sometimes that your pulse is going to increase when you consume a lot of coffee at one time. Uh, and then also, as it said, that it's also used as a diuretic. Uh, it does increase blood flow renally, and it can also decrease sodium and water reabsorption, so that's going to cause the increased urine production. Okay, theophylline is actually, um, like I said, a bronchodilator. It's been used to treat asthma, and this is because it can relax and open the breathing passages. And then uh, one, uh, sorry, uh, one study that I did find was, it was talking about the antioxidant and hepatoprotective effects of green coffee versus roasted coffee. The in vitro part of the study looked at beta-carotene linoleic acid, and it was looking at the antioxidant properties. It actually found that green coffee, so the unripe, uh, the ripened unroasted beans were better at um, being an antioxidant. And then the ex vivo study was using rat models, and it found that the roasted coffee was actually better at being hepat hepatoprotective or liver protective. Okay, I actually found several clinical studies relating to coffee. The first one um, was about blood pressure. Uh, the study population was consuming coffee for 56 days. Um, they were non-hypertensive at the time. Uh, the median dose that they would consume was about five cups per day, and the conclusion was that there was a positive correlation between coffee consumed and systolic blood pressure. So when they consumed more coffee, there was um, about, I think, a 2.4 um, millimeters per mercury increase in systolic blood pressure. That was the average that they saw. Um, systolic blood, blood pressure is the number on top, the higher number that you'll see. Um, Another clinical study is relating to asthma. There ended up being an inverse relationship between coffee consumed and asthma occurrence. The exact statistic was about 29% decrease in the odds of presenting with asthma symptoms when consuming coffee. Uh, another one that I found was patient response to analgesics. It ended up being that coffee kind of enhanced um, an analgesic that they would use. So it ended up being that if there was no caffeine or coffee consumed with the analgesic, about 40% more was needed of one dose of the analgesic to create the same effects that coffee added. So the conclusion was that they might need to add 65 milligrams of caffeine to the tablet to create the same effects. All right. Spontaneous abortion or miscarriage. Uh, this was observed in Swedish women who had a miscarriage between 6 to 12 weeks uh, gestation. And it noticed that there was uh, an increase in the occurrence of spontaneous abortion with consumption of 100 milligrams or more of caffeine. And so they decided that there was a moderate to high um, risk uh, if you had a caffeine intake. Um, and then Parkinson's disease, which is, as we all know, a neurological disorder. Uh, it occurs in about 3% of the U.S. population over the age of 65. And there actually ended up being an inverse relationship between coffee consumed and the incidence of Parkinson's disease. Okay. All right, so some contraindications of caffeine. Um, I know that we all love to drink a lot of it. We're all college students. We do need to have it sometimes to stay up late. However, I'm sure you've noticed sometimes that it does cause some negative effects. Um, one gram or more um, can cause some more serious effects, but we're also going to notice sometimes uh, the more standard ones, like we, you get a headache, you get nauseous, insomnia, restlessness, delirium, tremors, uh, excitement, tachycardia. Um, I'm not sure how many of you experience these. Um, you probably have. but. And actually, if you consume caffeine for a greater period of time, it's going to be actually 1.5 grams that can cause this. And actually, I looked up some of the coffees that um, we do have on campus and found the caffeine content. So a Starbucks brewed grande coffee has about 320 milligrams of caffeine. Uh, your generic roasted has about um, 266 for the same size. And Einstein Brothers has about 300 milligrams of caffeine. A uh, latte from Starbucks has about 150 milligrams, and a frappuccino has about 115 milligrams. So as you can see, it can quickly add up, and then that's when you can get some of these effects. 
because of this, you can um, get what is called caffeinism, which is the psychic or physiologic dependence on coffee. And so, unfortunately, if you decide to stop drinking coffee all of a sudden, you can go into withdrawal, which will cause headaches, uh, sleep disorders, um, bad things like that. Uh, the thing I mentioned earlier was chlorogenic acid. I mentioned its gastric effects. Uh, these are actually sometimes more negative. It can cause an increased gastric secretion, and also it can cause diarrhea and a depressed appetite. And also, uh, another contraindication that they found with a study was that nursing mothers uh, should probably not ingest caffeine because it can cause sleeping disorders in their infants. And then also, um, as we saw from that one clinical study, it is not advisable for pregnant women to drink um, coffee because it can cause an increased risk of a, a spontaneous abortion. Okay, current use in allopathic and CAM medicine. Uh, Coffee charcoal is used um, currently. It is actually the roasted outer part of the fruit, so kind of the fleshy part. It's roasted until it's about, um, until it turns black, and then it's ground up, and it's used to treat diarrhea and inflammation of the mouth and pharynx. Uh, so it's taken orally for that. Caffeine is also used in over-the-counter drugs. As you see, um, it can be used in cold and allergy remedies. Oh. Uh, cold and allergy remedies. Uh, that makes sense because of the bronchodilator effects of the theophylline in it. Um, diuretics, increased urine production, analgesics, uh, we saw that in clinical study, and stimulants. And then also it can be used for weight control uh, because of the depressing appetite effects that uh, the chlorogenic acid can have. It is also used in Ayurvedic, Ayurvedic medicine. The unripened beans are used uh, to treat headaches, and then the roasted and ripened beans are uh, used to treat diarrhea. All right. Some quick conclusions. Uh, as we all know, coffee is an integral part of our society. Um, you know sometimes people don't just meet for dinner, they just meet for a cup of coffee. Um, and it has obviously been used for over a thousand years, most consumed functional food in the world, um, big part of our culture. However, there are some benefits and drawbacks to um, the coffee, especially regarding the caffeine content. Um, but it does have medicinal properties. Uh, it is used, obviously, as a food. Um, however, drawbacks, you can have things like caffeinism. You can cause some of the negative effects that we saw in the clinical studies. Um, and you might not want to end up like that guy. But um, thank you. Um, hope you all enjoyed uh, hearing about one of my favorite simulants.